Hi everyone, my name is Ben Churchill. I'm a senior manager in the education team at KPMG. We're delighted to be the founding supporter of National Numeracy Day. And despite this really challenging situation, we're so pleased that so many supporters have got involved with this virtual festival to help people improve their numeracy. KPMG is a professional services company and we use numbers all the time to solve problems and to help our clients. We know that numeracy is really important in understanding the world around us. And that's why this year, we've been working with the Economist Educational Foundation to help improve young people's numeracy skills using inspiring discussions around the news and current affairs. The sessions have been designed by specialist teachers from the foundation and are usually delivered alongside KPG volunteers across our offices. We hope you enjoy this online version. You'll get the chance to use your numeracy skills to better understand the news, digging into data, uncovering facts and sharpening up your presentation skills. Do check out the resources on the screen here if you want to find out more. Thank you very much for uh, joining the session and we hope you enjoy the rest of the programme. Hello, I'm Tiffany Smiley. I'm the programme director at the Economist Educational Foundation. We're a charity that enable inspiring discussions about the news in and between schools. These discussions invite young people to be curious about the world's biggest ideas and challenges and ask them to consider what should be done about them. Today we're going to be talking about numbers in the news. Numbers in the news help us receive facts, build up knowledge on what is happening, and support opinions that we hear about a topic. But they can sometimes be overwhelming and scary as well. We're all currently hearing a lot of numbers in the news around COVID-19. For example, the number of people who've been getting the virus. Statistics don't really tell all the human stories, but they help us to understand what is going on in the news issue. Understanding how to interpret numbers in the news and ask ourselves questions about them is important for building knowledge about an issue and understanding its seriousness. It can also help us gain perspective. The current coronavirus crisis has shown us that thinking about numbers in the news is really important. In this session, we're going to have a go at a couple of short activities looking at numbers in the news to help us practice interpreting numbers and to think about some top tips we can apply to the future. These activities are all from a workshop that we at the Economist Foundation created back at the start of the year 2020. All the activities are about numbers in the news and there'll be a link available so you can download and try all the activities in this workshop as well. So for the rest of the session, I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you so that you can work through these activities with me. So I'm just going to find that PowerPoint now. There we go. So we're looking at numbers in the news and I'm going to be showing you a few slides and each slide has a different statistic or number and image um, of something that's been in the news in the last few years. What I want you to do is when you see the first slide, I want you to look at the image, look at the numbers, and think about what does this number tell you? Is it a big number? Is it an important number? Can you remember anything about the news story that it's relating to? How does the number make you feel? And is there any information missing that would help you understand the number or the story? So let's look at the first slide that we have. Here we go. So this is the first slide. So what does the number tell you? Is it a big number? Is it important? Can you remember anything about the news story? How does it make you feel? And is there information missing? Well, this number actually refer refers to the 2016 Brexit referendum when the Vote Leave campaign infamously painted this claim onto the side of a bus and they claimed uh, that 350 million would go directly to the NHS if the UK left the EU. And this was um, proven to not be entirely correct. Um, but when we're answering those questions, what does it tell you? It might, it might be telling us that um, people are making quite large claims. It is a large number. You might remember other things about the story. What it might not tell us is what 
the other side of the campaign were doing because both sides of the campaign, Vote and Leave, were accused of miscommunicating information and numbers. So there might be some missing information there as well. Let's look at the next slide together. I want you to do the same that you did for that first one. So what does this number tell you? Is it a big number? Is it important? Can you remember about the news story? How does it make you feel? Is that information missing? So this slide is referring to the Australian fires, which began at the end of 2019 and went on for months. Um, at the time of us publishing our activities at the beginning of the year, um, it was estimated that over half a billion animals had been killed. Um, reports are even higher. There are some that go up to one billion now. And how this might make you feel, that number might be quite daunting and really, really huge. So you might feel sad um, or shocked about that. I think the image probably um, enforces some feelings because um, we're seeing animals there in and around the blazes. But that's a really, really huge number. It was in lots and lots of newspapers at the time. And then the final slide. So I've got two numbers here, I've got an image to help you. What does the number tell you? Is it big? Is it important? Can you remember anything about this new story? Is there anything a bit confusing about this one and what information might be missing? So this slide is how many individual votes both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump received in the 2016 US election. So there's going to be another US election at the end of this year, but in 2016, um, we saw Trump and Clinton going up against each other. Now what some of you eagle-eyed students might have seen is that the numbers don't quite add up because if you look at them, Trump won the election, but he has fewer votes there. So that might be a bit confusing um, and that might have revealed to you some information that was missing to help contextualize that. So these numbers um, don't quite make sense because in the US, um, states act a little bit like a mini election and whoever wins the most votes in a state wins that state. So to win the whole election, you need to win the majority of states, not the individual votes. And that's quite a controversial thing that people often debate um, when it comes to elections like this. So we've just had a go at looking at three numbers in the news over the last few years. Are there any top tips that you can take from your interpretation of these numbers? So think about what information a number or statistic does give you and what it doesn't give you. And one thing to point out is that we fact check these numbers, but one thing that's always good to do is to double check any numbers in the news you see. So try and find a few different sources that have the same number or see the original source that it's come from or the original report as well. So thinking about your top tips, which might be um, really thinking about what the number's telling you, thinking about its size, thinking about if there's any information you don't have or if you might be able to misinterpret that number in any way. What I've got on this next slide is a few headlines, um, two of them we've made up, and the bottom one um, is actually a true headline, um, but we've made up some headlines with some figures here. So minimum wage set to increase to $10 an hour, 500 university places left empty this year, and world set to heat up by two degrees centigrade. So if you saw these headlines in a newspaper, how would you apply some of those top tips about interpreting number? What questions might you have to make sure you understand that number in context? How do you know it's an important number? What questions might you ask? So for instance, minimum wage set to increase by $10 an hour, you might want to ask, what is the current minimum wage? Okay. 
for the 500 university places left empty this year, you might want to ask, well, what are the reasons for those being empty? Or how does that compare to a previous year? Can I see the numbers of empty places left compared to last year? Because this could be seen as a positive thing if there were far more empty spaces the year before, or it could be seen as a negative thing if this has been a huge jump from the year before. And do you have any knowledge of your own around these subjects that you can apply to help broaden your understanding? So the second and final activity we're going to have a go at is a presenting activity. Um, and we've called this um, task Elevator Answers. Um, and we're really looking to interpret number, but also practice some presentation skills. So think about the presentations you watch at school from other students or teachers, or that you've, you've seen on TV, maybe a speech happening. And what makes a good presentation? It might be things like speaking directly to your audience, being clear and concise, it might be using some arm movements to help emphasize your points. Now think about how long it takes to ride an elevator up to the 10th floor of a building. So imagine you've walked into the elevator and you've pressed the button to 10 and you get in there with someone. So you're in the elevator with someone and they've asked you a question. So you only have the time it takes to get to floor 10 in that elevator to answer their question. So that's why we call it elevator answers. You're under time pressure to answer a question and present. Let's imagine that's about 45 seconds and that you've got 45 seconds to present an answer. Now on um, the slide here, you'll see I've given you a question. And that question is, which country or area should we target a climate change campaign at? And what you need to do is based on the data that you've got here, you've got some information here, you need to prepare an answer to this question that only takes 45 seconds. Use the data as evidence. Keep your answer under 45 seconds. You might want to add in some additional information that you know around this topic, but you must include conclusions you've drawn from this data in your answer. How would you go about answering that? So you might have drawn different conclusions to someone else you're working with, or I'm sure everyone doing this activity might come up with slightly different answers based on their interpretation of the data. So we've given um, data there about um, five countries or areas of the world and their total carbon emissions in 2017. So the area or nation's total carbon emissions. And at the top there, we've got China, and right at the bottom, we've got the Gambias. So you might have chosen uh, to answer your question based on maybe targeting the country or area with the biggest emissions, or you might have targeted um, an area or country that you know are doing a lot of work around this area, um, or you might have chosen to target um, a country that don't have high emissions already, so you might feel like they might be able to lower them. But hopefully you use the data in some way to think about your answer. Now that you've thought about your answer, I'm actually going to throw a spanner in the works and give you some additional data to help you answer your question. But this additional data might actually make it a little bit more complicated for you to answer the question. So it might be giving a bit more context to how we can think about carbon emissions. So the additional data I'm giving you there is we've still got carbon emissions, but this time we've broken it down per person, per capita, per person in that country or nation. So 
all of the carbon emissions were divided up per person, this is how much you'd have for everyone. So take a moment to have a look at the new data and see if it affects how you're going to answer this question. You've still only got 45 seconds to answer it though. Not giving you very much time, but hopefully you've at least had a chance to think about how you might adapt your answer. Maybe you don't, maybe it's reinforced your answer, but it's given you some extra evidence to support your opinion. In the downloadable resource that we have, we've got three other examples of a key question and then some additional data. So you can download that and then have a go at those after this session. And having done that activity, it's really good to answer some questions that help us reflect on it. So some questions that would be really good to answer include, what new information did you learn from the additional data? Did your answer change when you read that extra information? Did any of the data make it difficult to decide how to answer? So are you a bit confused? Sometimes numbers don't give us the answers, they actually make us ask more questions. And is there any extra, extra information that you need to answer the question? Do you feel that you can give a well-rounded answer as good as you can in 45 seconds with this information. So as I've mentioned, this entire workshop, Numeracy in the News, um, is available, available via a link which you'll have access to. Um, and there's several hours of work and activities in that download. So I'd really encourage you to go and have a look at those different activities and have a go at those. Um, and the Economist Educational Foundation also creates um, resources all around the news. Um, and we've been doing that weekly currently during the lockdown period. Um, and we've uh, got a whole range of both classroom and at home learning resources. So you can go to our website to check that out and find more information about that. Um, and we specialise in programmes in schools, so if there are any teachers um, listening or parents who want to contact schools, um, we run programmes in schools which are led by the teachers all around news literacy and how to interpret the news, um, critical thinking skills and communication skills as well. So thanks for taking part in this session. Go and download the activities to have a go at and we hope that we'll be hearing from lots of you about how you're getting on with them.